Hi everybody, my name is Kelly and my channel is called Minimalism in the Making and I have not filmed a video for uh, I don't know how long. It's been um, definitely several weeks, maybe months. Um, pretty much all summer. I think I did one um, in Jul July maybe, like middle, I don't know. Um, that was probably the last one. I kept thinking that I kept telling myself I was going to do it and I wanted to do it and it was just, um, I can't see very well with these. Um, yeah, it was just summertime and I guess summertime is bad for video making for me. Um, either everybody was home and making noise and like being where I was in the house or we were all gone somewhere or I was gone somewhere and there wasn't really any quiet time um, where it was just me. So anyway, here I am. I've never had a consistent schedule as much as I've talked about um, having one. It's never happened. So this is nothing new. I am. This is a weird. This is weird. I'm in my bed. I'm on my bed right now. Never filmed from here. Um, eventually, I, I jump around all the time. So I feel like eventually there will just be like a, a house tour. Um, if I keep changing locations, I'm, I feel like I'm hiding up in my room right now to film this. Um, I was trying to get away from the dogs. Um, they're, I don't know, they're just, their school started today. Um, our, the Seattle teachers were on strike. So school didn't start when school was supposed to start and it's been, um, it started a week late, I think exactly. So it started today finally and the dogs are like being weird and they're barking randomly even more than usual. So I'm hiding up here in my room, even though um, Boyd's here with me. He's, he's gonna take a nap next to me in the bed or on the bed. I'm not in bed. I'm not like in the bed. I'm just sitting on it. Um, and the lighting up here right now is good, so. <sighs> Todd's up here too, he's on the couch, but he is sleeping soundly for the time being. Um, I don't know, I'll, if there's, if I cut out, it's probably because the dogs barked. Um, anyway, yeah, and for the record, our family is, was and is standing strongly with the teachers. Um, they definitely don't get what they deserve um ever so uh it was hard to not school start school on time um in different ways for my kids um and us but it wasn't that hard they're gonna have to make up five days in this school year now so um unfortunately that's probably going to um that's probably gonna look like a later release at the end of the year so I, who knows when they're gonna get out of school this coming this next summer um anyway this is not a channel about school strikes and um whatever that kind of stuff um it's about cross stitch mostly it's about arts and crafts and a little bit of crafting minimalism which i'm going to talk about more um in this video because um I met a new friend who um, helped call me out for not having much, um, if any, of that content on this channel like I said I would, and I appreciate that because I've thought the same thing several times. So I actually have some footage that I, uh, I'm not 100% sure at the filming of this right in this moment, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to put at the end of this video some... Um, crafty minimalism talk and um, footage that I shot of um, of basically like what I have as far as like um, stash and everything and what my goals are and and what I'm doing with it and how I'm storing it and that kind of stuff so 
Um, if you're interested at all in that, it's going to be at the end. Um, I have, because it's been so long since I um, made a video, I have a ton of stuff to show. So um, it's going to be all cross stitch this video. Sometimes I show um, quilting and crocheting and knitting and other things like that. But um, this time it's just um, cross stitch because I did, even though I wasn't um, doing much of like watching or, well, I didn't film any cross or any um, floss tubes this summer. Um, and I also wasn't watching as much as I usually do, but um, I was stitching quite a bit still. And so I have a lot to show. Um, so anyway, I am really glad you're here. Thanks for clicking on my video and thanks for watching. If you're still here, we are six minutes in and I haven't shown anything. So um, let's get uh, let's get started. So I have finishes. Not a whole lot of, um, actually this might be the only full finish, but I have my September of monthly horses. Um, this is from Little Fox Stitching and um, they used to be on Etsy. They're not anymore. They're on, um, I'll put a link they're on a new, uh, on a different website. Um, so I'll put that in the description box because I still don't know how to put, I don't know how to write stuff on the screen. I need to figure that out. I use iMovie and it, I don't, it doesn't seem intuitive. Um, but anyway, I don't know why I'm holding this so close because then you can see how terrible my corners are. It's cute. And you know, the white stitching, which I'm not a fan of because my white stitches usually look like garbage. Um, these, these look okay. They look okay. Um, you can kind of tell on the gingham, gingham fabric with white, this might even be like, the horses might be ecru. They're, they're like some kind of shade of off white. Um, but you can kind of see the gingham behind them. But anyway, this is really cute. I am um, still stitching these. I don't have every month done yet, but I just um, put them on. I'm Velcroing because I had Velcro. I had these little Velcro dots like in my um, sewing stuff. And so I'm just putting these on as I finish them or not as I finish them. I'm putting them on a little piece of board as I finish them, but then obviously when it's the month changes, then I put them on this little thing. And this is in my kitchen. Um, I have one of those uh, windows in my above my kitchen sink that's like a, they have a name. I don't know what, I can't remember what they're called, but it's like the window that goes out and has um, surface area and three, instead of just having glass on, um, it's got glass on the sides. It like bumps out. What are those called? They're called something. Um, anyway, that's what I have over my kitchen sink. So I put that in there with a couple other things and it's really cute. That might be my only full finish and I have a stack of, um, I have a stack of not full finishes and I'm going to, I'm going to go through the whole thing, even though there's a few things in here that I think, and these are not in order at all. Some of these things I finished quite a while ago, or at least like months, months ago, um, a couple months ago, maybe, I don't know. Um, I put all of my finishes in just in a pile. Um, before I fully finish them. So they're not in any kind of order. Um, like these two I just did last night. No, that's a lie. It's a big lie. This one I did last night. Finished it last night. It took a, a two or three nights. This one I finished um, 
a few months ago, I think when I first got the chart. <coughs> Where? Here it is. They're both from the Heads Up from the preschooler. So this one, I stuck with the, I stuck with the called for on the witch. And I think, um, this is not 14 count. It's smaller than that. I think it might be 18 count. It's 16 or 18. It looks like 18. Anyway, um, really cute. I, I took some pictures of putting this in coffee and um, just because it looked kind of cool when it was in there. So I'll put that on my Instagram. But um, this one I did not stick with the called for. I really wanted to stitch a scarecrow. But this one, the way that it's orange and um, black that's not black. It's 3371. It's the ultra dark brown, but it looks black. Um, I just did this, it made the scarecrow look slightly creepier than I wanted it to look for my, um, I don't know, just for, for what I wanted it for. So I did change colors, but I stuck with, let's see, so the brown is the brown, and then the reds in the flower hat and shirt are the called for reds that are still, that are in this book. So three, seven, seven, seven. Yeah, and then the gold is actually from, it's 729, so it's the called for gold in this other book. Um, there's not a whole lot, oh look, there's another, you know what, I didn't even notice that scarecrow. Okay, I might have to stitch this one too for fall because I was, it's bigger. It's definitely bigger than this one. This one was super quick. Um, anyway, so I think it's cute with the gold um, straw color. And so that's that one. I might stitch that other little sc scarecrow. It's, let's see, these were, 35 by 31, the one, the little uh, head that I did stitch, and then this bigger one is 48 by 47, so it's only like 10 bigger each way. It's cute. So, since that one's so small, I might just add that to my list. Um, okay, put that over there, put that over there. Now, these two, I did put on my Instagram. Um, these are from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting dot blogspot dot com. I think I'll add that in the every, most everybody, I don't want to say everybody knows that, but a lot of people are familiar with that blog because um, she puts out tons of really cute, small free cross stitch patterns. So these are both hers. This one is from her sunflower sampler. So it had an alphabet and I just skipped that and just did the sunflower. That's really little. This is on 20 count Ada that I, um, I'm sure I dipped this in coffee at some point. It's just a little bit tan. And this one, I can't remember what she calls this, but I did it, I did both of them in the called for colors. The only thing I changed on this one was it had a square border and I just brought the, I brought the border in to just be more snug around it. And this one's actually done on a 10 count burlap with four strands of DMC. So I wanted it to be really chunky. It's still like the size of the palm of my hand. It's still small on that, but it's really cute. And I, I know I've shown this a million times, but it's so pretty. 
and I'm getting closer and closer to fully finishing it because I already trimmed it down and sewed fabric around it um, to make it into a bag and I messed up on the what did I mess up on um, I don't know something was off in the dimension so I, I took the fabric off of it you can see there's a couple thread um, pieces of thread still so I'm going to redo it, not redo this, but redo the bag, the bag front. Um, I never get tired of looking at that one. I love the colors. Oh, this one I just finished um, a couple days ago. This is Amish Life from the Prairie Schooler, and it is... Copyright 1985. And I mentioned this was one of my May starts, and I mentioned maybe um, changing up some of the colors and kind of brightening it up a little bit. And I ended up not changing any colors on this. And I really like it. I, I might put this, I might make another um, one of these okay I just spilled water on my leg um I might make another one of these for my quilting journal for the cover of my quilting journal I think I might do that oh my gosh I really need to put the lid on this because I just spilled it under my leg and I'm on my bed okay so another dog just found me Molly has come in and is stalking me she's not big enough to jump onto the bed so she's just staring at me from the floor she's the quiet one so she's at least not gonna bark at me um, this is the little flower that I stitched from the Trans Pride Tapestry that is also a finish that I'm, that one's like halfway fully finished into a bag. So this is just going to be like the little zipper fob. So I'm going to show that again and tell all about it when it's done done. It's literally like down on the sewing table right now, like with a zipper half sewn into it. Um, I've shown this one before. This is the little Prairie Schooler peep. It's so cute. These, this is from the little stitch cards. I want to get more of those. Um, this is the only one I have so far and they are so cute. Uh, this is the Witches Inn from the Prairie Schooler. And there's another, this is in a book that I'm going to show in a few minutes that has another bigger piece that I want to start maybe for sampler September. But this is, this is really cute. Um, I want to make that into something. I'm not sure exactly what yet. Uh, finished the what's it called? Melancholy from Not Forgotten Farm. And this is on where is it okay this is on 32 count forest floor linen by Sarah Fem, and I used two strands of DMC over two linen threads on this and I have specific plans for this that I'm excited to show you as soon as it's done. And it actually, um, let me show another finish that I have similar plans for. So this one, actually I can't really, I can't call this a finish until the buttons are in the jar, but I'm gonna do that when I fully finish it, so. All the stitching's done. Um, it just, there's 
you sew buttons, real buttons in there. Um, let's see, this one is on 60, page 67. This one is on, this is by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread um, from 2020. And it is on 32 count light mocha linen from Threadneedle Street. And it is, um, I think it's, two, yeah, it's two over two. And I used the reds that I used because I was having trouble deciding what to use for this one for the, um, I changed some stuff. So instead of using sticks and twigs for the scissors, I used Weeks Coal. So I wanted them to look more black and my sticks and twigs that I have is really brown. Um, let's see, for the tomatoes, I used um, Gentle Art Tomato and uh, Classic Colorworks Chili Pepper. Those were both called for. And then I also added DMC 22. And DMC 22 is the color, that's the red of the tomatoes in the um, What's it called? The tomato book, the book of tomato pin keeps that she put out. Um, Keeper of the pins. So I added that one. So the tomatoes are all different colors and I think two of the little ones are the same. And then the green, I did some different ones there too. I used um, Weeks Oscar and Weeks Bayberry instead of Gentle Arch Dried Time. Cause I couldn't, I could have swore I had dried time, but I couldn't find it. Maybe I never had it. I don't know. Anyway, so these I have similar um, finishes for. And so I'll show those again when that's done. Um, this one, um, 1865 Freedom. I'm pretty sure I showed this already. I just am showing my whole pile because I couldn't remember like what I showed and what I didn't. Because um, it's been so long since I videoed. But this is from the Primitive Hair. And it's on Ada that I dipped in wine. I crumpled it up and put it in a in wine and put a lid on it for like 24 hours or something. So I like the, I really like the fabric. I have another small piece of this, I think. I am almost positive I showed this before. I need to just make this, I don't know like make it into a bookmark and use it because otherwise it's just going to sit here in my pile. Um, this is a Prairie Schooler bookmark. And I did use the called for colors on that. This one is called um, Seaside Sparrow. And I think it's by uh, Artful Offerings. Let me check. I don't want to say that I don't want to say the wrong designer. I feel like that would be a an unacceptable faux pas. Yes, Seaside Sparrow from Artful Offerings from 2019. I used the DMC. It's charted for both DMC and Overdyes. Um this is 32 count Belfast linen in cream and it is two over two. So cute. What is going on with his? Oh, that's just my crappy stitching. So don't look too close. Okay. Um, pretty sure I also showed this when I finished it and or maybe I just put it on Instagram, but I have a frame that's like the oddly the exact size of this that I'm going to put it in. Um, this is from, well, let me just double check because I think it's the 
Posey collection. And this is called, I know it's called Blue Monday. Let me double check the designer. Blue Monday, yes, the Posey collection. So this was a full kit and I got it from Garon Stitchery, which is an online um, cross stitch store. And I used everything in the kit. Full coverage, small piece, smallish. I mean, it, it is small, but you know, it's full coverage, so it takes a while. And this one, I am not a huge fan of stitching words and letters. And anytime I do, I'm like very, I check and recheck and recheck and recheck. Um, to make sure I spelled the words right. So this is not called Ocracoke Island. It's called, I'm checking this one too. I think it's called Lighthouse Keeper. And it is from, um, I'm looking in my little stitching journal here and it does, does have a, come on. Oh, there it is got a table of contents that's what I keep looking at okay lighthouse keeper by Twin Peak primitives DMC two over two 32 count linen in color tumbleweed from thread needle street so cute the only thing I changed with the colors was I changed the white to 3865, which is pretty much white. And I changed the whale from 310 black to 04 gray. And the reason I changed the whale is because I just wanted it to be gray. <laughs> I didn't want the whale to be black because it looked kind of like um, with the white waves up against it, it looked sort of like it was going to be an orca. And I just, I don't think, I, I don't know, East Coast. I am not a marine biologist. I'm just going to put that out there first, but I just wasn't thinking like East Coast. Um, orca. I was thinking East Coast gray whale. And I'm not saying gray whale like the species. I'm saying like color gray. That's just what, that's just what I wanted on my cross stitch. And um, it has no base, no, no, no science, scientific basis whatsoever. Um, but I have, we have orcas out here. And so I just feel like even though orcas can go wherever they want and I don't I don't know what the orca like how limited their um territory is but I just think of west coast orcas um and I never see it. there's a we have a blog for the neighborhood um that always like people are, are always like oh the orcas are here or whatever and then like friends will send pictures of, you know, orcas swimming by and I'm never, I have never like been in the right place at the right time or gotten the news when I could be in the right place at the right time, which is sad. This is, this is a photo that, um, a local person took of like what's out the windows. I do not have this beautiful of a view. I've got a lot of um, roofs of other houses. Um, I, we can see the water and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and we can see the mountains, um, but not like unobstructed like that. And, um, anyway, so, so when I stitched this, I was like, okay, I'm putting a gray whale just because I wanted to like really see the contrast between the 
white of the waves and the gray of the whale and that's it um those i don't have the pattern the picture of it it doesn't say 2001 it's not charted for that it's an old year um and i changed it to 2001 because that's when we camped on ogrococa island and we we camped um we island hopped along the Outer Banks camping uh, one summer, and Ocracoke was my favorite. And they all have lighthouses that are really beautiful. Anyway, so she doesn't have eyes. She wasn't charted for eyes. I don't know. I think it's okay. I think it's okay with me. This is going to go in my bathroom. Not my bathroom. A bathroom in the house that has a bunch of um, coastal theme cutesy stuff in it so I think I'm just gonna try to find a frame that fits this and put it on the wall in there <sighs> okay lastly this is um, another pinker and pumpkin quilting blog freebie they're all freebies she's so generous hers her um, designs are so cute too and they're small and fast. Um, anyway, the year on hers was different. It was the 1700 year, um, not 1700, but 1700 something. I can't remember. But I wanted this for Memorial Day. And so I Googled first Memorial Day and I went with the year from the first article that popped up I did not I didn't I didn't double or triple check it at all I spent like 30 seconds looking looking up the information so it could be wrong but I think this might be the first year that we had a memorial day and it wasn't called a memorial day it was called something else and then eventually they changed it to memorial day but anyway whatever this is this is gonna be a little thing that I put out um, for Memorial Day and I think it's cute and um, yeah and this was on I must have dipped the, this this was probably white thrift store Ada that I dipped in coffee at some point and it looks to be 18 count or six maybe 16 count um, so that's, that's my big pile of little finishes. Most of them are pretty little. Um, but I have, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to feel inspired to spend a day, um, just full finishing and sewing. Um, and I hope that that day will come soon. I hope that I will feel like it because full finishing is not something you want to do when you're not feeling it. Um, it's not something I want to do when I'm not feeling it because the stuff does not turn out well. I just noticed that there is a bee on my wall and I'm hoping it doesn't come after me. Okay. I made notes like a professional. So let's see where we are at. Oh, so um, I had a, oh, I went to um, Jody's house. Jody, who is Trixie Tricycle on Floss Tube. She had a little um, locals meetup at her house, um, which was so generous. She opened her home to um, some stitchers and um, it was really fun. So we went there and stitched and I met two new people, new to me. Um, Susan Stanley from A Stitch in Time was there. I already knew her and had met her, but there were two other people who I had not met. One of them, um, shoot, one of them was a Colleen from um, Stitching with the Sisterlies and she brought us these really cute little um, pumpkin needle books that she had made. They're so cute. Um, and I put mine in a project and 
put mine in a Halloween project and now I don't know where it is. Shoot. I don't follow the rule of like not using something until I show it because my videos are so, um, there's so much space, so much time in between my, in between my videos that I can't like, I just, I don't know, I can't wait that long. So I'm hoping I come across it um, as I'm going through this stuff. So, and then also, um, oh, and Colleen's really nice, by the way. Um, and she's hilarious. Uh, let's see. So anyway, um, Susan gave us a whole rundown, play-by-play -play of um, summer school at the attic because she had just come back from there and it was really cool to hear all of her stories and see all of her stuff. And then... Um, I met, um, another local stitcher named Jill and she is, oh, uh, let's see. I'm going to put her Instagram in the drop down cause it's Positano girl 15 P O S I T A N O girl number 15. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, Jill. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to put it in the, in the drop down. Um, but anyway, she's, uh, on Instagram, you should definitely check her out if you don't already follow her. She's um, stitches a bunch, but she also quilts a ton. She is a beautiful quilter. So, um, yeah, it's nice to, it's, it was so nice to sit around a table and stitch and chat and just be with people who understand the obsession and um don't judge it <laughs> um and then jody is just she's just so generous with inviting people into her home um to do that and then of course she's just like oh here here's all my stuff if you need anything just take it <laughs> and she has a ton of she's like she has her like stitching room is basically like an lns I mean, it's, it's packed, packed with everything. Uh, sorry, Jody, if that is like an overshare, um, but it's true. Um, oh, whips. Okay. So I have, let's see, I have, I started a, um, new kind of rotation. So I was going to do a five, I was going to pick five projects and do a five day rotation because like Monday through Friday. However, I changed it to seven because I do stitch mostly every day, at least a little bit. Um, and so, and I do, um, I wake up extra early and specifically to stitch. So. I pulled seven projects and each, each day, each project is sort of has a theme to it. And so I just have seven and I labeled them Monday through Sunday. Cause that's kind of how my brain works the week. And, um, and so I just, each morning I do whatever, whatever that project is for the day. And the reason that I did that is because I kind of always just stitch on whatever I want to, whatever I want to. But the fact is anything that's a whip is something that I really like. And I have a lot of projects that just, well, I have a lot of whips. So if I don't work on them, you know, uh, a little bit here and a little bit there, um, they're never going to get done. So I'm just trying to create a balance between like, really big projects and really little, um, doing really little smalls that take a night or two or a morning or two. Um, because yeah, if that's too much out of balance, then my bigger projects are just never going to see the light of day. And so I'm going to show my, um, seven, day and you know I have I, I love to say like I'm gonna do this and write it down that's part of the fun for me is like coming up with 
Um, I'm a planner and a list maker, and uh, so coming up with these tactics and plans is kind of fun. Um, and I don't know how long I'm going to stick with this. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. Uh, it's just, where's my Tuesday? Oh, okay. But I'm doing it for now. Okay, so on Mondays, I am doing something that's close to a finish or that seems close to a finish because I grabbed this project that I'm about to show thinking, yeah, this is close to a finish. And then when I was stitching on it this week, it's like, mm, it's going to be a while if I'm just doing it, you know, one, one morning a week, but, but it's still pretty quick. So this is called Fish and Frogs, and it came out in March, I think, whenever that um, needlework market was, and it's from Ingleside Imaginarium, and it is very cute. It was an exclusive, and it came with those little cute little pins, and I really, really like it. And I'm doing it on the called for fabric, which is this light blue 14 count Ada. So it's it's an easy one to do. Um, without great lighting or, you know, um, it's two strands. And here's the little needles that it came with, or the pins, not needles. I'm not going to make the drum, so these might do something different. Because, and the reason I'm not making the drum is because I want to see the whole, I want to see the whole scene, because I really like the scene. There is, if you haven't started this already, I do want to say that the stitch count on that's printed is incorrect. Um, unfortunately, it was a typo or something, and I cut my fabric based on the printed stitch count without double checking it against the chart. And it's actually, I think the height is correct. I believe the height's correct, but the length or the width is actually longer. So I had to cut off, um, So I'm cutting off like kind of halfway, um, not ha so like half of these, um, whatchamacallit, cattail section, I'm just cutting off like that and that, I don't know, it's maybe like an inch or kind of half of that. Yeah. So it's for this, I mean, it could have been a lot worse for this design it's gonna be fine I don't you'll never know because it'll be like three cattails instead of four and like maybe two instead of four over here and nobody will ever know but um yeah it could have been way worse so did I actually hold this up so this is where I'm at and it's fun and cute and then on Tuesdays, I am, Tuesday is my Prairie Schooler day. So whatever Prairie Schooler I want to work on, um, right now I'm doing some seasonal, I guess. Um, yeah, I was doing the summer days, but on uh, starting last week. I started doing, let's see, I did him. And now I might, I thought that the cat looked kind of fun. I don't know. I might um, pick one from here to do next. I actually started this one, I think. Yeah. A while ago. So I might finish him up. And I changed him from orange to gold, which is the gold that's called for like in these eyes. So it's still 
co the color that's like in the book. I don't know. There's so many fun ones on this. Yeah. So on Tuesdays, I'm just doing whatever I feel like doing out of there. I also have these three that um, might be fun to start one of those this season. Anyway, that is Tuesdays. And then Wednesday... Did I mention this was going to be a long video? Well, I mean, that's silly because you saw the time timestamp when you clicked on it. Okay, so Wednesday is my biggest, oldest full coverage. My most full coverage-y full coverage. Um, and that is from Heaven and Earth Designs, and it is called a Mini A Light in the Dark by Matt Stewart. Let me pull the, I got it printed at a local print shop. And I am doing it the old fashioned way. And meaning that I'm just using the paper and I am <laughs> I should have given a trigger warning about all the thread ends but this is what's working for me right now so I mean that this is like confetti stitching in there but there's like waist knots around too so anyway if that made you cringe I'm sorry that I didn't warn you but I had a page finish. Um, I'm showing this because there's labels. Wow, I just almost gave myself a paper cut in the face. Um, I've just been putting these labels on the 10 by 10 squares as I finish them. And that's also working for me. So I finished a page. I might have already shown that. It's been a while. And I am like getting there on more of it. So that's Wednesdays and then Thursday. Thursday is the day that I decided to do any kind of calendar series. So I have um I have two in the works. Whoa, sorry. Again, I'm on my bed, which is weird. And so, um, yeah, I've got two in the works, and I grabbed one for uh, Thursdays. And the one I grabbed was the Monthly Horses from Little Fox Stitching, which I already showed today, my little September. And um, I've got only a few more to do. I think I have November and December and I jumped around a little bit. Maybe like April, June and July. So maybe five. I might have five left and I am into November now. That's my next one. So this is the fifth or this is the first of five left in the series. And then I'll have all 12. Um, what's next? Friday. So on Fridays, um, the mini light in the dark has its own day. And then Fridays are full coverage. So a smaller full coverage would be on Fridays. So I'm doing... Um, this one because it's summery and it's still kind of summery here a little bit. I'm just kind of clinging to it now that it's not miserably hot and humid. Um, it's so nice. The weather's so nice. Like I could do with less smoke from the forest fires, but you know, um, it's a lot worse for 
um, other people than it is for me. We just have to put up with some smoke. We're not actually getting like evacuated from our homes or anything. So that's where I'm at with the sky. I'm starting at the top and working my way down. So this is a relaxing stitch. And I won, I actually won this. This is the first time I won anything on a costume giveaway and it was from Hannah's Stitching. So thanks Hannah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna just stick with it until it's done, because it's kind of going pretty well and I could do that, or if I'm gonna start feeling like it's not seasonally appropriate and maybe like pick up a different one, I don't know. That is yet to be determined. Okay, and then Saturdays, um, I'm doing a sampler. And this is in my Saturday sampler is in a bag that my new friend Jill, who I just met, brought me and everybody else that was at Jody's. She made this. Look at the seashell fabric. That's my favorite. I love this blue too. But she made this and it's really pretty and got this cute little baker's twine um, thingy on the zipper and then I clipped Jody gave me this look how cute that is it's got just a little piece of a sampler not a piece of a sampler a image of part of a sampler in there and so I clipped that on too and the sampler that I'm working on right now is the one that I kitted up at the attic last year or no this what year is it this spring in April it's called Moonflower and it's by hands to work and it also um, besides fish and frogs it was the only other one that I actually bought at um, that was a market release in March um, anyway, so this one I kitted, I bought it online and then I took it to the attic, um, and kitted it up. I just happened to be traveling through there this spring and I barely had it started when I took it over to Jody's and I, um, I was doing, hold on, let me tell you what the fabric is. This is 36 count Bees Knees by Seraphim. And it is not the called for fabric, but it's close. It is close. So I barely had the green across the top started in um, two over two when I went to Jody's and then um, Colleen gently um, helped me uh, convinced me to try one over two on 36 count 36 count I really really like but I'm fairly new to it so I was just doing my normal two over two and it looked pretty um, chunky this I like better because I do appreciate the like seeing the stitches, seeing the X's. Um, more just for my personal taste, I like that, especially on samplers. Um, more than I like having like every little bit of the square filled in with thread. So, um, so that is my Saturday. Stitch. And then lastly, my Sunday is so I have um, this whole, um, okay. Well, I don't know what happened here. I think I put my needle with the thread on it 
on the needle minder and then the thread came out. It came unthreaded because I was probably rooting around in the bag to find something. Oh my gosh, and there's a knot on the back. Okay, whatever. So this is, let me just say, this whole thing, Sunday is my um, Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting Stitch Day. And so it's got a little bit of everything from her blog. And this, I started, um, this one that I started is the, oh, you know what? I Because I'm just printing from the blog, I'm just printing the chart. I don't have, I just have the chart. I don't have a picture, but you know what? I can show you. It's really, really cute. It's like a sewing themed, um, give me just a moment. It's a sewing theme themed it's called, well I can tell you what it's called um I'll put the link down below too Edna Viola's salt box is what it's called um and I'm going to show you a picture on my phone real quick oh my gosh it's so cute she does all of these salt box houses um, and here it is. Look how cute, look how cute that is. So it's got scissors, it's got spools, it's got tomato pin cushions, it's got everything. It's so cute. So that's what I am working on. now. Okay. My, th my thread looks terrible. Anyway, so she's got a bunch of these salt box freebies in all different themes, and I just thought the sewing one was so cute, and I want to do all of them. She's got a ton. So go to the blog if you haven't already and check it out. Okay, so that's my 70 rotation whips. And... Um, what else? Oh, so I did, so those are for in the morning, which is when I wake up extra early to stitch. And in addition to that, sometimes if I am lucky, I'll get some evening stitching in. Not all the time, but I, um, I've been doing seasonal stitching. That's how I did a bunch of those little, a bunch of those smalls, um, was seasonal, like evening stitching. And so I'm going to show, let's see, I'm going to show my seasonal stuff and like what I've started because I have started a few um, Halloween charts. Okay, so the first one is a uh, button eyed cat from the Scarlet House, and I think I picked this up. Um, no, I know I picked this up in person at Stitcher's Paradise in Las Vegas. It's so cute. It is little. It's 62 by 66. So I'm using all of the called for colors except instead of using, because um, it's called for gentle or sampler threads, um, I'm using all of them except raven instead of raven i'm using the suggested dmc which is 310 and here is and i don't know what fabric this is 
it's just a scrap of linen and it looks like it's 32 count if I had to guess so it's gonna be really cute and it's charted so that you can stitch the eyes or put buttons on and any chance I have to put a button on a cross stitch I'm going to take it so that's what I'm doing So that is my, why won't this go in? Okay, so that is a Halloween-y type whip. This one is barely, barely, barely started. Did I just show the pattern on the back? I hope not, but I might have. This I picked up in person at Threadneedle Street, Street in Issaquah. It's from the Cricut Collection. What, what year is this? 2020. Look how cute that is. It's got a little frog. Like, is he a balloon? Or she, is she a balloon? It's cute. The whole thing's cute. So this is 88 by 154. And I am doing it on, I usually try not to do stuff this big because when it's finished, I need to have somewhere to put it, but I am, I'm going bigger than normal and I'm doing this on 14 count Ada. I picked this I picked a huge piece of this up. Um, I'll show it sometime. I picked it up at a thrift store. It's like three yards or some, it's like, <laughs> it is a huge amount of the, of this Ada. And I cut a little piece. It's, I, it looks to be 14 count. It's kind of a, I don't know. It's like lavender, but darker than lavender. It's a purple. It's a shade of violet purple. And um, so I'm using the called for colors and I just <clears throat> started up here last night with her hat. And the only thing that's really purple on here that I can see are her wings. And I will just make sure that whatever purple is called for stands out on this fabric. And if it doesn't, I'll change it. But it probably, it looks like it probably will be just fine. So that's not that one. I think that's all that I have started, but I have, oh my gosh, does this keep moving when I'm not looking? But I have a few more. So these are kitted up. Um, okay, hold on. I'm taking something out of the package right now. I'm going to show a few kitted up. like kind of Halloween fall things that I could at any moment, any moment start. Candy Corn and Pumpkin by Stitches by Ethel. Oh my gosh, this is pattern number one. So it says Candy Corn and Pumpkin 2021 by Ethel Kafave, Kafaver. Not sure. Not sure the pronunciation there. And it says pattern number one. So I'm not familiar with this designer, but that is a really cute pattern. And if that's pattern number one, that is an especially cute pattern number one. So I have all this stuff. I've got some fabric and all the thread. Um, I'm gonna do it on 32 count Ivory Lucana from Threadneedle Street. Okay. 
another one. I can't show this one because it's shoot. I only have the I only have the pattern, but it's from the Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2000 mm, 2020 Just Cross Stitch Halloween issue, and it's called Framed Fright, and it's a cute little haunted house with a bat inside a really ornate gold gilded looking frame and it's a small ornament and it is very cute if you like haunted houses and old-fashioned looking things and ornament Halloween ornaments go google that okay this one if it's too glary I'll take it out I'll take it out this one I haven't yet started but I have fabric and it is called um, October 31st by Frog Cottage Designs Happy Halloween Series 3 and I actually am thinking that I'm not gonna I'm just gonna omit this part and I was thinking because I like the the bird that I would just perch the bird on a part of the tree on a branch that makes sense um, and the fabric I have is from it's 36 count so this is from Steel City Stitchers fabric of the month with Jody and I actually don't belong to that but um, Jody my friend Jody of Trick uh, Trixie Tricycle does or did and she didn't use this fabric and is like she's into like 50 some count fabrics and so she gave this to me she evolved quickly in her um, fabric uh, fabric count anyway so I you know what? I'm not totally sure about putting this on this, um, but I might, I might, I really want to do this. I might, because it's got orange pumpkins, I might do like a little bit more of the, put it on more of the purpley area because there's a lot of, um, one corner is more purple and one's more orange, so. But I think that fabric is really great. So I might do that one at any moment. Oh, there's another magazine one that's really cute. And I made a copy of the... Of the picture of it. Why is this in plastic? Oh my gosh. Okay, this is called Jack on a Swing and it is by Linda Medina or Linda Medina? Medina Originals. Look how cute this is. Jack on a swing. So this was from Just Cross Stitch October 2020. And um, this is a 36 count maybe? It's 32 or 36. Oops. Just going to pretend that never happened. Um, I was thinking of putting it on the screen. Undecided, but potential, potentially. So that's that one. I think that is all, except for oh, one more thing on that. 
I don't know that I'll start this one this year, but it would definitely be, if I don't start this year, definitely be next year. Um, Jody gifted me her spare copy of the um, Primitive Hair Cross Stitch Calendar for 2021. And it's got a really cute jack-o'-lantern, jack-o'-lantern. Where is it? Oh my gosh, how do I, sh I need to cover this up with something. What if I just do this? Look at that cute jack lantern with a spider on it so cute so that's one. Oh, and i made a bag jill inspired me to get some fabric out and make a bag and i made one i got a bunch of old little practicey cross stitch projects that i was just starting out using friendship bracelet making threads from the kids craft area um, that we had at the house and um, this was a freebie on I think it's on Teresa Kogut's website or blog or something um, but it was a freebie and I made it I made a few things I made a few little cross stitches that were just kind of practicey things and I didn't have any plans for them and they've just been in a pile and um, I didn't want to throw them away but I had no use for them and so I um, pulled a bunch of bright fabrics and made a bag so this is I just used what I had the inside is cute polka dots and some yellow writing thing and I had this zipper this is like an old old metal zipper I need to put a I need to put something on the zipper because the pull is so small but anyway it's um it's a weird size it's not the size that I'm going to make uh, moving forward for bags but it's a perfect size for um it's a perfect size for this calendar so I'm going to get up some of these that I want to do for next year and um, put it in here and that might be my monthly calendar stitch for um, next year. Okay. Let's see. I am... I think I'm done with, um, what happened to my notes? Okay, so whips. I did my weekly rotation, season, seasonal, oh, sampler September. I didn't pull, I have like a few little, a few, not little, but, well, yes, little, but kind of beginner. I don't want to say beginner either. So I have Moonflower, Lady Man, Sampler Borders. The only one I have in front of me is Moonflower. That's the one I'm currently working on. The other two are started. Um, that's kind of it for, oh no, I have Nature's Peace um, that I will show next time. That's another, um, I think it's Carriage House Samplings. Um, that is like a nature themed sampler. I've got those all going. And um, I might, just because I found this at a thrift store a while back and if I do start another sampler for sampler September it might be this one it is 105 by 93 so I mean it's like medium size and Oh, the other, so I did pull a couple things. So I pulled three things that I could maybe start, I might want to start in September. 
that are samplers and it would be this one which is called measure twice cut once Uh, yeah, and it is or it's called measure twice and I saw it on um, 24 hours of cross stitch and I can't remember everybody's name but they're um, I didn't write it down Oh my gosh, there's a car alarm. Sorry. Please stop. Uh, yeah, anyway, I saw this stitched and finished on there. I think her mom had done it. Um, but I can't remember. I can't remember names. So anyway, um, that's really cute. It's like kind of a quilting themed um, one. And it is 113 by 70. So not too big. And then this one I think kind of counts as a sampler too. I want to start this this year. I just don't know when. I might start, I might put it into maybe October, but it is called Memento Mori. It is 71 by 257. So it is long. It's from Satsuma Street. And I know that I want to do it on black, but I also know that I don't yet have a piece of black fabric that is this long. So I'm not ready to start this because I don't have the supplies, but I might try to get that going for October. So maybe one of these two would be fun to start just to celebrate Sampler September. Um, but again, I don't have them kit kitted. And I think, okay. Yeah, I think that's it for whips. So that's a lot because I haven't filmed for a while. So my plans for the rest of September are to um, see what I can get done on my seven day rotation on those guys and then um, I think for my seasonal stitching for the rest of September I might just try to go through all my stuff and um, make sure that I start any of the fall projects that I want to start and maybe even finish um, like any of the fall smalls So yeah, I think those will be my plans. And then maybe start one of those samplers in September, just because everybody's doing it. Um, yeah, so that's it for cross stitch. Um, I am, oh, you know what? I wanted to show one more cross stitchy thing and it's not a whip and it's not actually cross stitch, but it's really kind of funny and fun. I was at the thrift store. I was at one of our local Goodwill stores the other day. Um, this was a while ago. This was like earlier in the summer, but I kept forgetting that I had it. It might have even been like earlier in the spring. But I found this and it was like two bucks or something. It's from Subversive Cross Stitch. And well, here, here's the info. um on the back but it's this really cool um thing where it so this is like this is um like chipboard cardboard like thick cardboard chipboard and you can put it it sits up on a on a flat surface by itself either vertically or horizontally and then it's got all of these and i don't know you maybe have seen this before but um, it's got so many of these. And there's, um, I 
there's um, horizontal ones and vertical ones and then there's also they're double they're all double sided so there's like I love this one 60% of the time it works every time um, ask me about my feelings some of them are super like office related um, I like this one let's not panic that's the one I had up downstairs what fresh hell is this I had a friend that used to say that all the time and it made me laugh walk away or you may approach this is my happy face there's um, a whole bunch they're just they're fun it could be worse I do what I want don't kill my vibe Ask me how I do it. Now accepting tips. Ugh, the whatever. I like the one word. Nope. Not today, Satan. Anyway, these are fun. And um, now I want to... Which one do I want? Anyway, this is fun. So I, you know, that's something that I certainly didn't need, but it's fun to have. And um, I have this up in, um, I did have it in my kitchen window. So, but anyway, it's really cute. So you can just frame whichever one you want and put it up and change them as much as you want. And it's cute. So that's it for cross stitch. Um, the rest is going to be, wow. Okay. The rest is going to be talking a little bit about, um, how minimalism, crafty minimalism, how that is showing up in my life right now. So if you don't care about that, um, thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And if you do care about that, uh, stick around for a few more minutes, or maybe longer. If I tack on like crafty decluttering videos to this, it's going to be longer. But you'll know. I mean, obviously, you know how long this video is. Anyway, so um, yeah. Thanks for watching, and um, don't forget, Idle Hands are the Devil's Workshop. Okay, so I, um, I feel like I've said this a million times. I probably have, but I did move out of a sewing room slash studio slash craft space, and I um, took some video footage that I'm going to, I think, pretty sure the only reason I was gonna like maybe not put it on this video is because I was afraid that maybe it would be too long I don't know um, but I will let's see we're at one hour 20 okay this is kind of long okay I'm gonna make a video um, if you want to if you're interested it will be separate because I took footage of all the stuff that I have left over from moving out of that space and it's all in my house right now and I don't have a specific room dedicated to crafting sewing all of that stuff so it's it's just here and um, I have a specific large piece of furniture that's already here that I am dedicating for now to all of that crafty stuff However, all the stuff that I brought over doesn't fit into it. So I need to make some tough decisions. And I am, um, so I took, I took video footage of everything that's, that's left out, out of the space. I took some footage of the armoire, the, the furniture that I'm wanting it to all fit into. Um, I took some footage of like, making that work and kind of like separating 
categorizing my stuff and like go not not so much going through every single thing but like this is all of my cross stitch stuff and this is all of my quilting stuff and this is all of my yarn stuff and so anyway I did the cross stitch um I did the cross stitch part and because it was the easiest and I'm lazy and I'm a procrastinator so when I'm looking at all three of my like general crafting areas which would be yarn stuff sewing stuff and cross stitch stuff cross stitch stuff is like by far the easiest to deal with at this point because it's my newest craft and I just have less of it than I have the other two and I also don't have like languishing projects for the needlework um, the other two categories there's like old half done stuff and that's just not fun to deal with so anyway um, I'm not done with the process so I'm gonna I'm gonna be making more videos um, and I'll talk about that and I'm not sure really what that looks like on this channel but um, I'm just gonna put it put it on here and see how it goes and um, just kind of document that journey for myself because I do um, have some goals around crafty minimalism and um, so I'll just be showing like what that looks like for me and how that's going and what I'm doing and and how it's turning out so um, I would say I just have like the really initial steps um, videoed right now it kind of just shows the mess I'm dealing with and a tiny bit of progress um, so more to come on that I'm gonna try to f film as I go as much as possible and I'll just label I'll just put those on my channel and lab label them appropriately if you're into that sort of thing you can you can view them at your leisure um, that is it that is it so I guess I just made the decision not to tack those onto this video, but to make a separate video uh, with that stuff. So I will probably do that at the same time that I am uploading this video because I already have that footage. Okay, um, well, thank you for sticking around as long as you did and um, I will see you I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I always talk about like when I'm going to make my next. I'm never, I'm never correct. So anyway, it'll just, it'll, it'll happen when it happens. Thanks for watching and um, happy stitching and all of that and happy September. And I will see you when I see you.